Louisiana Harvey, I'm Sudi Landry, and thank you so much Facebook people for tuning in also. This is Acadiana Open Channel and we hope that you enjoy the show today. I started off with uh, inviting this young lady to come on to talk about two of her books to find out before we started recording that she has a whole lot more in progress that we want to do another show later. But for right now, we'll talk about her books. Welcome to the show, Jerrica. Thank you, Miss Sudi. Did you always want to be an author of children books? It just happened. My little boy asked me, I've always loved to read and write, mind you, and I started writing poetry when I was very, very young. But uh, several years back, my son was four, I think, at the time, and he asked me for some pickles. Mama, can I have some pickles? But it came out as pickles. Mama, can I have some pickles? And in that moment, right away, I thought, that is a cute name for a pig. And so, piggle, wiggle, giggle, jiggle, it just wouldn't leave me alone, and there it was born. So, you wrote your first book? I was sure that? And that book's name of the title is? A Pig Tale. Okay, now see, I missed that part, and I read that whole book. Yes, Thank it's you. a pig tale, and it's just a silly swine tale. It has a, a lot of play on words, a lot of larger words for vocabulary enhancement, but it does include a thesaurus-style dictionary in the back, so children can look and replace some of those larger words with more common words. Now, my mother Goose, Katie Anna's mother Goose read that book and you had you even had pig Latin in there. She did her best and she laughed and she laughed so much before the show was recorded, but she did her best. And she said she apologizes if she did some of the pig Latin backwards, but that was a cute idea too. I love, I love hearing other people read my stories and I don't get that opportunity very often. Usually when I do the school and library visits, I'm telling the story and so that was a real treat for me. And life is not perfect, you know? We so know. I think she did a fantastic job. And there is a touch of pig Latin in there, which Mother Goose found it. <laughs> uh, my mom taught my sister and I, when we were very young, how to speak pig Latin. And it's kind of lost these days, but I do get notes from teachers telling me that after my school visits, they are getting notes in Pig Latin from their students. So it's very easy to pick up and it's fun. Now that's interesting because I haven't heard that terminology in years and I've been on this planet almost 70 years. So it's amazing that Mother Goose was even able to try to do it. She laughed and we laughed and it was a wonderful time. Now, is the second book that's gonna be on the screen, the little book that wanted to be read, R-E-D? Is that your second book? It's the book that wanted to be read, and it just came out in November of last year, 2017. And uh, we've had great success with him as well. Um, it's about three and a half years from idea into fruition and about four years on a pigtail. So we are working ASAP, as Southern <laughs> as possible but we're also balancing motherhood and many other hats, you know. Well, I want to add something very special. Jerrica went out of her way to personally mail a copy of the little book that wanted to be read, R-E-D, to my great grandbaby, who I had gotten a copy from Mother Goose, and she didn't want to let go of it, but I had gotten a copy to give Mother Goose, so Jerrica took it upon herself to mail uh, my little great granddaughter a book. And she loves it, and she was supposed to, I was supposed to try to have her on the show today, but she's dealing with some little sickness and whatever. But she wants to come back, so we just might bring her back. Absolutely. In the future and let her talk about the book that she thinks she can read now. Absolutely. she's four years old. But thank you for being so kind and doing that. Happy you know? to do it. And uh, it was amazing, because she knew it was her book, and she recognized her name. So, but anyway, uh, she just came over a couple of days ago, and she picked the book up and told me not to give it away, so I promise I won't. But anyway, Jerrica, now we want to let Acadiana know that you always had some beautiful books that you saved and you hid them away because they were so beautiful that you didn't write in them, you didn't do anything. What made you, share the story of how you hid these books and how they became part of the writing process. I don't know why. It seems so silly looking back, but these books were 
obviously handmade. The outsides were wrapped in silk and they were embroidered and hand beaded. They were so lovely. And so I, just over the years, I would get one here, pick up one there, and I stored them safely in a dresser drawer because I didn't want to mess them up. <laughs> and then it just dawned on me one day that the only way I could mess them up was if I didn't write in them. I thought I had no problem writing in a regular spiral notebook or other books that weren't so fancy. I said, so <laughs> when I broke them in, I really, really broke them in. I would skip pages, write upside down, sideways, uh, every color you can imagine. And so once I took the leap, I jumped off full speed ahead, both feet in. And uh, the problem was they were so beautiful on the outside, but they were empty on the inside. That was the problem. But being afraid of messing them up, silly. So I conquered that fear, Sudi, and here we are. Well, now let's talk about why did the barrier of fear keep you from writing? What was so fearful? Why did you think you shouldn't write anything in these books? Or is that what finally inspired you to write something? I was saving them for something special, and I just had the epiphany, what could be more special than using these beautiful books to record my stories and my little inspirations that I get, funny things that my children say that I may use as material in future books. So, um, but on a different aspect, talking about fear, when you work so hard and you want to make something as precious and perfect as possible, there is a fear when it comes time to release it because you're open then to criticism, you know? Um, but that's just a step every author and illustrator has to take. And I've said it before, I'll say it again. Not every person is going to love your book. For example, I'm not going to get in the car and turn up heavy metal music. It's just not my thing. But they do have their own following. So don't let fear hold you back. Go forth, because plenty of people will love your stories. And I've had great feedback on them. I love that positive attitude. Now, would you share about uh, when did you start actually writing? those wonderful memories down in these beautiful hidden books? What year? Well, about? I would say I started collecting them in 2002, and I started writing in them around 2011. So that gives you the great expanse of time that they were just tucked away in a dresser drawer. Um, so so is, did anyone else know the books were there besides you? No, no. ma'am. No, ma'am. And how about how many books? I'm curious. There's okay. about nine books. Wow. We need to see some pictures of those books. Yeah, well, I was going to say, some of them are falling apart now. Okay. The, the silk is coming unraveled, but for all the right reasons. So it was worth it. Take the leap. Have you written all those memories stored in your mind from so long ago? Have they actually made it onto paper outside of that book? The I question haven't. is, do you have it? Are you still working on that? That's books in process? It's always, always in progress, always in process. Inspiration comes to me daily. Um, I am never at a want for or a lack of inspiration. So. Okay, well, since this book uh, is on the screen, would you like to share what inspired you to read this, to write this book? I like to laugh. And I just find it so interesting how we are often misunderstood, you know? Uh, we try to be loud and clear, but what we say isn't always what they hear. Even in my own home, my daughter, she just turned 11, but, Mama, you said I could. No, ma'am, that is not what I said. I don't know what you heard, but that is not what I said. So. This book, the book that wanted to be read, is just a comical spin-off on how the simplest things are so often misunderstood. And uh, there once was a book, and as Mama always said, the happiest books are the ones that are read. 
and he was born a light shade of white, so he thought about being red every day and every night. He had friends of many colors. They seemed happy enough when they weren't feeling blue, but red was the happiest, for if mama said it, it must be true. So Book sets off on a red-hot pursuit through the seasons of the great state of Louisiana to become the color red because he simply misunderstood. And he tries several times and fails, but ultimately he is successful. It's not what he thought it would be. So he decides to visit his neighbor dictionary. She's smarter than the average book. Perhaps her wisdom within is what he couldn't do without. So they're sitting on the front porch drinking sweet tea and Book tells Dictionary, my mama always said the happiest books are the ones that are read and clearly you see I'm red as can be and never have I felt such misery. So Dictionary smiled in her own special way, picked up Book and said, let's try adding an A. And so I'll leave you with that little synopsis, but it's a lot of fun. It's a really, really cute book with a wonderful spin-off. It really is. And yes, I can see you actually performing in the different schools and children getting excited. I mean, I was like wanting to jump up a little bit because I read the book and it is so cute. So that you already shared a little bit about The Pigtail, which is the other book. Okay. And how was it inspired? You mentioned earlier. Yes, by my little boy asking for pickles. pickles. It came out as Piggles, and it just never left me alone. And uh, Vivian Broussard illustrated that book. Uh, that was her first children's book. And Hannah Gumbo illustrated the book that wanted to be read. But um, I've always had a love of language, a love of words. My grandmother, when I was growing up, if I, if I asked her, Granny, what does this word mean? She'd say, Get the dictionary and look it up. Now, the dictionary was not online. They didn't have the internet back in those days. <laughs> and it was an encyclopedia, you know, book dictionary. And so now it's one of my most treasured earthly possessions, and it too is falling apart. <laughs> but uh, that's another book that wants to be read, and it has been read often. So, have you gotten good feedback regarding the books that you have written already? I've gotten a lot of really great feedback, and it's exciting. People will send pictures and videos. Um, the children reading the books themselves or an adult reading to them. Uh, I try to post those all on my Facebook pages to share. But uh, I know that when I was younger, one of my happiest memories is when I was being read to even in school, my teacher, group readings. I wish I could go back in time and just thank them. Thank you so much for reading to me. Um, your imagination soars. You really can go anywhere in a book. And so sometimes I just want to hold a sign out, you know, in a busy place and say, when was the last time you read a book to a child? And something that I've, you know, want to touch on too is it's, it's not just children who have yet to learn to read, it's also adults who never learn to read. And so we want to be able to give our time, you know, uh, volunteer in these ways, not just for the children, but for the adults, because we should all be empowered. You know how much you read on a daily basis. Um, it's so important, and so we have to share that. You know, I'm so glad that you brought that up because being the president of the Writers Guild in, in Lafayette, Louisiana, we have monthly meetings the last Saturday, the last Tuesday of every month. I'm so blessed to be so part of many, so many other things. I gotta get this straight. And when I first became president, I was gung-ho. Boy, I wanted everybody to write. Whatever you're thinking, write. And one of the members who was a past president came up to me and said, Sudi, not everybody's here to write. They just want to sit here and listen, be inspired. And that was the best thing that could have been told to me because then later on, the people who had been listening for many, many years personally came to me on the side and said, I came here just to listen, but now I'm inspired and shared with me a couple of people that were publishing the first book. But they said, I just like being a kid again, like being a child and listening to all these wonderful stories. 
So, childlike memories, childlike, and I, and I can relate to what you're saying. Then people in nursing homes, yes. Absolutely. I know different people that go there and it's wonderful. Okay, so with that said, of course we have something to talk about a little bit later. Uh, where have you had your previous book signings? I have been all over the state of Louisiana at libraries, schools, nursery schools, festivals. Uh, we were at the Baton Rouge Book Festival a couple of years, and um, I'll be once again at the Experience Louisiana Festival in Eunice on October the 20th. Um, there is really nowhere that I don't go. It's just a matter of getting it scheduled and on the books. and. Uh, to touch base on what you just said a moment ago, Sudi, often the adults will come to me after these readings and they'll say, I don't know if the kids, who had more fun, the adults or the children? So it's very important to keep your inner child alive That's right. and let her or him come out to play. I tell people, don't take yourselves too seriously, you know? I get the kids to <laughs> some I have to work on a little harder than others, but <laughs> I say, find your inner oink and get your swine on. Do what makes your heart happy and you'll be in hog heaven. Where have you been previously? I'd like to know. Where have I been? Where have you been? Where have you shared this wonderful story time telling like oh, you're talking about? Well, this summer I was in Youngsville okay. um, at the Lafayette Library. It's a, a location of the Lafayette Library. Mm -hmm. And we had a ball. We used up our entire hour and then some. I think they were trying to sweep me for the next uh, for the next presentation, but we had so much fun. Um, I was also in Austin, Texas um, at the little summer camps, which this is the second year I have volunteered at the Whole Life Learning Center for Camp Indigo, and we do story time. And it's really fun, and you know, it, just different age groups, you can tailor it to fit their needs, but um, there's something in there for everybody, adults. I mean, the whole span. When the, we put an age range on something, I say zero to a thousand, okay? Well, let's talk so. about this. Let's talk about the Bayou Writers Group. What, what are you doing with them? October 13th, that's mm -hmm. in Lake Charles. Uh, once a year, they have this conference, so I'll be a guest speaker there. Highly recommend you looking into that if you're interested in writing or illustrating or just want to make some connections with like-minded people because you walk out just so inspired, your head feels like it's going to explode with information. And it is a great opportunity as well for uh, you to learn by other people's mistakes whenever possible in advance of you possibly making the same mistake. And so that's been extremely helpful. Um, so I'll be there on October 13th in Lake Charles. It's a bridge to publication writing conference put on by the Bayou Writers Group. Um, and they're at bayouwritersgroup.com, so check that out. Please join us. Well, I'm amazed because this is awesome. Actually, the uh, Bayou Writers Group is a spinoff of the group that I'm the president of in Lafayette. The lady that was the president went and formed a group over there, and they're wonderful. And so sometimes we get speakers to come from there to speak to our group, and then recently I got a request for speakers, they needed some. So it's like wonderful knowing you can network and all these wonderful authors that I haven't met yet. Absolutely. We'll probably never get to meet everybody. But. And that's the beauty of it. See, you started here and you inspired them yeah. and it, so it has a domino effect. Good work is being done. Not just the things that you see in the news, but behind the scenes, lots of good things are happening. So the next big event for you is October 13th. Okay, and it says here, the door is open at 7.30. The conference is from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And for more information, they can check out the bayouwritersgroup.com. Absolutely. Now, I know for a fact, okay, we have five minutes left in the show. <gasps> yes. Oh Are we having goodness, fun? Yes. I am. You're performing. I love it. Most of us already know that authors not only write books, but sometimes they illustrate or they meet wonderful illustrators, uh, but they also have other activities they're inspired 
or they inspire people. Now, let's talk about the Wish and Doll Project. Katie Anna, this is something that is so interesting that after our show today, I'm gonna to try to get Jerrica to come back in and we wanna do a whole show on the Wish and Doll Project that she has started in Eunice, Louisiana. So right now with five minutes, four minutes left, let's talk about what it's about and why it was created. I went on a girl's trip to Sedona, Arizona and came back just on fire. I was so inspired by the art, the creativity. It was just, it was a magical trip. And so I wanted to do something in my own hometown, artistically speaking. And my first idea was part, uh, a bronze uh, musical instrument sculpture for the historic district until I got to looking into the prices for those things and I decided I wanted to be alive to see it come to fruition. And so I went down to Barbara's nursery and I was walking around and she had these darling, darling little animal sta uh, benches, giraffes, elephants, turtles, uh, alligators, pigs, cats, everything you can imagine. And it was just in that moment standing at the nursery I said, that's, that's what we're gonna do. We're going to make uh, outdoor reading gardens for our local elementary schools and give children a whimsical place where um, the colors are bright, they're outside getting fresh air, they can read there or be inspired to write their own books. So um, we come together, we've had great support from the community. Um, all of the little materials are donated or their items found in nature like you can see their little arms are just made of twigs so we get together grandmothers bring their grandchildren neighbors bring their you know their neighbors um, and we get together and we have a day of making wishing dolls and then they're put up for adoption they average around five dollars a doll but they have uh, fully funded the outdoor reading garden at East Elementary they have about eight or nine animal benches uh, set down in a circular pea gravel with two metal swings and a precious gate that goes in. And right before the gate, there is a, a mailbox stand that has the book bus on it. And so they can either get a book from the book bus or they can bring a book in there uh, with them to read. But it is beautiful and you can see more about that, the wishing doll. Facebook page in Eunice, but we would love to see uh, other communities start this kind of thing in their own towns because the time spent together, well, it's priceless. And then the outcome of the labor of them gifting us their art, now a lot of times they want to uh, adopt their own dolls, but um, when several are made, we put them up for adoption and we just had a really great bit of support. Sometimes you can look on the little popsicle stick underneath. These are ones that I adopted and I brought from my kitchen window to share with y'all today. But this one with the little red hat right here, she was made by D. Dubois on the 1st of July, 2014. Now, um, we used to make them with a little clay head. They, too many ended up in the hospital of love, I call it. So we did change our method and now we're using wooden beads for the little faces, but they're absolutely precious. They're very simple to make. We have a ton of fun, and then it benefits our community, so. That's perfect, and uh, Katie Anna, we will be doing an update on that project. As of right now, we're gonna have to be closing out the show, and I wanna thank you, Katie Anna, for tuning in. And also Facebook, be sure to share this uh, show with your friends because we want to plug that uh, Katie Anna Open Channel offers everyone an opportunity to come on and share with us what are you doing what are your dreams what are your visions and so we can inspire other people and you get a whole lot of uh, free exposure and with you today thank you so much Jerrica for coming out I look forward to us doing the next show is there anything you'd like to say before the closing credits are finished Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for watching. Please share and please read a book to a child or an adult today. Yay! Thank you. Oh, it's so wonderful.